A summer slumber in the tropics could be nearing its end here in the month of August. The National Hurricane Center keeping an eye on two tropical waves on the same day. NOAA's mid-season update says the season is showing no signs of slowing down. Hey there, folks. J.B. Buno here with you live again in your hurricane headquarters on our first August edition of Track in the Tropics, getting a little bit closer to the busy season here in the Atlantic hurricane season. Great to have for the first time here on the program, CBS4 meteorologist Andrew Shipley joining us from the Texas coast. Great to have Andrew on the program. We'll be picking his brain here in a little bit, answering some questions here in the Facebook Live comment section. A lot to get to here as far as the three areas in the in the Atlantic that we're monitoring here very, very closely here over the next several days, next several weeks here. Uh, but if you have any questions, we want to hear from you in the Facebook Live comment section. You can use hashtag HeyAndrew, hashtag HeyJB, or hashtag HeyRebecca for Tracking the Tropics Meteorologist. Rebecca Barry joining us at the wall with the very latest. Hey, Rebecca. Hey there. We've experienced quite the lull in the tropics over the past couple of weeks. In fact, if you look back, we went through late July into early August with no activity out there. And so even though it was a really fast and early start to the season, what we saw over the past couple of weeks has been very quiet. Unfortunately, all signs are pointing to that potentially coming to an end over the next couple of weeks. We're monitoring three systems right now. Nothing that's a direct threat and it's still way too early to tell exactly where these are going to get end up or if they're actually going to end up developing or not because nothing's organized at all right now. And so this is the area that we're monitoring, but it's drifting. And as it drifts closer to the Windward and Leeward Islands, that's when it has the chance to develop. Once it gets into this zone, there's actually a lot of Saharan dust and wind shear in the area it's in right now. And so there's almost no chance it would develop where it is. It's once it gets up a little bit further north and a little bit further to the west that it does start to see a slight it's a slight chance for development, a 20% chance right there. So that's the first system that we're watching, and that one is the closest one to the United States, even though it's thousands of miles away at this point. Now we're watching two areas just off the coastline of Africa. The first one's very small, and they don't expect much out of it. 0% chance over the next two days, 0% chance over the next five days. The, the, the last one that we're monitoring right now is still rolling off the coastline of Africa. Now this is where a lot of hurricanes are born. They're big thunderstorms. They roll off the coastline of Africa. They move just to the south of the Cabo Verde Islands and they start to spin and they start to rotate. And these are those long form hurricanes that we track for days and days and days because it's so far away. I don't think this is going to be one of those. It's a little early in the season for that. That's more of a late August, mid September type pattern. And so it only has a 30% chance to develop over the next five days. But if there was one to watch, this is probably the one because it does have the highest chance of development at this point. We keep these things change quite a bit, especially depending on the different dynamics dynamics we see developing out over the Atlantic, but this one is the one that's that we're watching right now. The, the most closely, the one that's a little bit closer to the U.S. is also, of course, a concern, but has a slightly lower chance to develop. And another thing that happened today is NOAA updated their seasonal forecasts, and they did increase a little bit. We're going to bring in meteorologist Andrew Shipley to talk about all these long-term forecasts and what we've seen so far. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, Obviously, the NOAA introduced their new forecast today. They upped it by one uh, for both, uh, it was 14 and 20, and now it's 15 and 21. So it's not a major increase, uh, but it's, I guess, a slightly surprising considering how quiet we've been. Uh, but we're just heading towards the, the peak of season as we get over the next couple of weeks and into September here. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised, obviously, if we see something. But like you just mentioned, it's a little early for something to come off Africa and make it all the way across, but it's a sign of things to come. And uh, as things are starting to wake up, we get the dust out of here a little less sheer, I think the traffic's are gonna be uh, waking up pretty quickly here. It does feel like once the first system or two rolls off the coastline of Africa, it's almost like a conveyor belt for a couple of weeks. And so just to bring attention to those numbers Andrew was just talking about. So NOAA is this forecast right here. They're the ones that do the range of storms. So other forecasts like the average, our, those average numbers and the Colorado State forecast, they choose a solid number. But NOAA goes for a range and they upped their range for named storms and hurricanes by one just because of what we've already seen. Even though we've been in the lull, we did 
did start early and we had a couple of those storms that were fish storms out there over the Atlantic that didn't impact anyone. One of them lasted almost less than a day. And so when they when those take up numbers and names, they update the forecasts accordingly to keep in line and also just to give us a better idea of what we can expect. That's what these forecasts are supposed are designed to do, just give us a broader idea of what we can expect for the season. Keeping in mind these numbers, if 15 hurricanes, 15 named storms form and seven hurricanes form and three of them are major hurricanes, but none of them are near you. It seems like a quiet season for you. All it takes is just one storm for it to be a terrible season if it ends up impacting your area. And so you just use these seasonal forecasts as part of the science and part of getting a better idea of what to expect. Now we are nearing the season peak, and so we're typically pretty quiet in June. We weren't this year and we weren't last year, but typically we're pretty quiet in June. We we're a little quieter than average in July this year, but as we head into August, we do start to build up towards that season season peak and so the season peak for named storms is here in red it's September 10th and just a day later is the peak for hurricanes and it's so the middle of September there's a reason cruises are usually really cheap in the middle of September and that's because we often have storms swirling around in the Atlantic that's typically when we see the highest number of named or numbered system in the Atlantic and Andrew and I were just talking about how it's a little early to see them rolling off the coastline of Africa because these are the areas that we typically see in August storms developing and so this red zone right here so just to the south and east of Hispaniola all the way back out towards the Windward and Leeward Islands that's the zone that's kind of a hot spot and so that first area that we're watching once it gets into this zone that's when it has a chance to develop now once it does develop because of the position the position of the Bermuda High right here it could sling it in to the Gulf but it's more likely that it would sling it out into the Atlantic. So we like this track because it's a fish storm track. Those are our favorite kind. But unfortunately, South Florida could be impacted this time of the year by formation in this zone as well. So that's our typical August area. Once we get into September, especially early October, that's when we look for those storms off the coastline of Africa. That's a hot spot there. And one of the reasons it's not usually a hot spot right now is because this is typically when our Saharan dust has just peaked and we're starting to see that wind down over the next couple of weeks. And so this is the Saharan dust forecast right now. You can see we have a swath of moderate dust over the Windward and Leeward Islands right now. This is where that first area that we were watching to develop is. So it needs to get out of that to have a better chance of formation. But the Saharan dust is a lot thicker closer to the coastline of Africa and that hinders development. And there's a lot more of it on the way through Saturday and Sunday. So this big plume of Saharan dust will be traveling across the Atlantic and should keep things on the quieter and weaker side through the weekend. It continues to make its way towards the Windward and Leeward Islands there, and it will it's pretty intact at this point. Now we're looking at a week from today. Next Thursday, it's starting to approach Hispaniola, and so hopefully that'll keep things quiet. The Saharan dust forecast does show another plume about to exit the coastline of Africa there, and so just because of that presence of the Saharan dust is another reason that it's a little early to see that formation just off the coastline of Africa. As storms do get closer, we'll be relying on the power of Max Defender 8 radar to see through the storms towards the next line, and that's exactly what we're doing out there locally this afternoon we've got tropical feeling downpours because of our westerly flow and that's exactly what we're seeing we're getting some flood watches and flood advisories oftentimes like we see within the tropics because we're getting those big afternoon thunderstorms and passing downpours they're slow movers they're showers making their way eastward across our area and that's what we're seeing on max defender 8 right now but i know that you guys have questions i hope you're using those hashtags hey andrew hey ian or hey rebecca so that we can access those questions if you use those hashtags we're able to pull them into our system and now we can get to the fun part which is answering your questions yeah great to have of course uh, joining us here as well from cbs4 in the rio grande valley of texas andrew shipley meteorologist there in the brownsville area great to have him on the program and uh and andrew what stood out to you with the three areas that we're monitoring here it's very very well, early I, here as following it, as far it, as following these systems but what are you what are you watching for Oh, it is early. Now, I do want to make note, though, that 30%, they did just upgrade that to 40% here. I'm looking at uh, as of the latest update. So it's 0 and 40 now, that one coming off Africa. Uh, but it's in the right spot. But it, like uh, Rebecca mentioned, you are going to be fighting that dust. You are going to be fighting that shear uh, as it comes across uh, the Atlantic. So it's something to watch. It's not something to, I would say, batten down the hatches, nothing yet. Um, but as we get in towards the next couple of weeks, this is something that we're going to be watching more of our coastline. Um, obviously, the hot spots being anywhere from um, basically Houston all the way through uh, the panhandle of Florida down 
down towards Florida and then up toward the Carolinas for this this year. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on that as we get closer and closer to peak season. As we're looking here at the areas to watch, being joined here again in our Hurricane headquarters, we have meteorologists Rebecca Barry and Andrew Shipley joining us here on this edition of Track in the Tropics. As you probably saw flash on the bottom of your screen, we're opening up the meteorologist Q&A portion here. We're live on Facebook pages across the southeastern United States, especially Really want to hear from you here. If you have a question for Rebecca, if you have a question for Andrew, use hashtag hey Andrew or hashtag hey Rebecca in the Facebook Live comment section. We'll get to your questions here. But you know, we, we've enjoyed Rebecca. We've enjoyed uh, this nice period here of some quiet after Elsa. Elsa cleared out, and then there was a period there where we just didn't have too much tropical activity, or at least noteworthy tropical activity. Here we are now in August, and we know that this lull here can only last for so long, and that's why we have this activity starting to show signs of ramping up here in the early weeks of August. It does take a couple of weak systems like we're watching right now to help clear out that Saharan dust and really kind of set the atmosphere, prime it for the storms to form. And that's kind of what we're seeing out there. Once we do start to see the first couple of systems wander through the Atlantic, we will start to see a higher chance for development. A lot of factors come together, whether it's the sea surface temperatures, the weakening of the shear, of course, that high pressure over Bermuda shifts a little further north this time of the year. And that puts the panhandle of Florida less in danger, but the east coast of Florida more in danger and so eventually the high pressure shifts even further to the north and that's when hurricanes typically tend to target the Carolinas and so that's just a couple of factors that we're watching unfortunately I feel like we always have an, an August threat at least by late August we're always at least worried about something and so that would be pretty typical for us for this time of the year it's been unusually quiet at least for the past week or so and we haven't done that in a while we've had some pretty active seasons especially last year and we sure did get off to an active start this year and so so I, I feel like we're going to have to be watching things pretty carefully by the late by the end of this month and the beginning of next month. But that's also Captain Obvious talking. Yeah, let's, <laughs> Captain Obvious for sure. Let's get to the first question coming in here in our live meteorologist Q&A here on Track in the Tropics. And Jenny here from Wavy's Facebook page joining us here from Virginia. Hashtag hey, Andrew. Uh, how's the East Coast looking? And uh, Andrew, you're, you're, of course, joining us on the Texas coast, not the East Coast, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm from the East Coast, so I can, I can speak of that. Uh, uh, looking pretty good. Uh, obviously, there's nothing really threatening that area other than that small uh, area that's uh, just basically not even halfway across the Atlantic yet, heading maybe that direction, but it's still too, fairly, too early for us to know. Uh, but I think if you're in the Carolinas and that area, you still need to pay attention uh, to what the forecast brings over the next several weeks. Get to this next one here from Shia Adams joining us from WMBB's Facebook page, the Florida Panhandle, tuning in here. Hashtag JB, do we have any hurricanes coming towards the Panhandle? And Rebecca, very fortunately, we don't have any hurricanes at all that we're monitoring no here in the Atlantic. No hurricanes at all. So very exciting time for us to be quiet. Uh, it's almost giddy when you're in August and you don't have anything to track out there. And so we're going to enjoy it while it lasts. No hurricanes headed to the Panhandle. No hurricanes headed anywhere right now. We're watching three areas that may end up developing, but they're way far out there at this point. The question's really starting to come in now. Let's get to uh, Judy here. We'll bring up both of our meteorologists here for this question. Uh, Judy here asking, hashtag KJB, hey, what are the chances a major hurricane could form with all of that Saharan dust that's out there. And Rebecca a moment ago was talking about the Saharan dust, and this is a, a, a good question here. The chances, again, of a major hurricane, which for those of you who don't follow us here on Tracking the Tropics, that is a Category 3, 4, or 5 hurricane. What do we say here for... For Judy's comments, starting with you, Rebecca. It's pretty low. Saharan dust tends to inhibit development. And then if a storm that's already developed moves into Saharan dust, it usually keeps it weaker. A lot of dry air gets pulled into the storm. Sometimes it tears it apart. Yeah, absolutely. I don't elaborate on that even more. It kind of sucks it in. And it really kind of disturbs the core. Um, where, you know, if we're talking strictly scientifically, it messes with the inner uh, circulation of uh, these hurricanes and it really kind of prevents them from intensifying. Uh, but it's also that dust is something to watch for your allergies as well. So it's something to think about, not just for our hurricane development, but something for, you know, you and your day to day life as well. Let's get to this one here from Brian Walker joining us. Hashtag Hey Rebecca for tracking the tropics meteorologist Rebecca Barry asking, are we in a La Nina cycle, Rebecca? 
Not yet. There's some scientists that have been tracking some oscillations that say that we may be transitioning into it. We're actually in so neutral right now. So we're in between El Nino and La Nina. It's not our favorite spot to be. Our favorite spot's El Nino. And of course, La Nina makes things more active out there for us. But it looks like we're still in, technically in the neutral zone. But a couple of scientists have been saying, eh, we're headed towards La Nina soon. Get to this one here from... Kim Witted from Wavy's Facebook page, hashtag Hey Rebecca. I'll throw this, I'll throw both of us, or all of us here up for this one. Yeah. Uh, hashtag Hey Rebecca, where will the strongest uh, hurricanes hit this year? And I think it's pretty fair to say that if anyone could actually answer this question with some accuracy, we'd all be in for big raises. And uh, <laughs> uh, But because quite frankly, let's be real, we cannot predict where a major hurricane uh, is going to be hitting, but I'll, I'll leave you guys to kind of take a stab at this we just had Rebecca we just had our areas to watch graphic up here yeah, and that's usually that right a pretty up. good indicator of where we might see some tropical activity form and then carry through here in in the month of August and so once again the science isn't there in terms of saying oh this year it's the Carolinas Louisiana take a break um the, the science just isn't there yet what we can tell you is that the, one of the major steering currents of hurricanes is the high pressure that sits over Bermuda and it shifts northward throughout the season now air goes clockwise around a high pressure and so that slings the hurricane so when it's further south that slings the hurricanes into the gulf early in the season as it starts to shift further north it slings them into Florida then it slings them into the Carolinas. Now, cold fronts moving through the U.S., of course, change this trajectory if it were to collide with a cold front. And so there, there's different factors. But in general, we look at those areas to develop because of the position of that high pressure system. So Texas still in the uh, crosshairs right now, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, and the other thing to think about, and, and while the science isn't there uh, yet, there is a lot of research, and I will tell you that, that into long-term weather patterns, um, an example is a one called VZAX reciprocating cycle, and it's looking into maybe working to do that down the road. But unfortunately, that science just isn't there yet. Uh, but I think we are heading in the right direction as a meteorologist community to work towards that goal. Andrew Shipley joining us from CBS4, the Rio Grande Valley of Texas here, everybody. Let's, uh, I, I don't know if you go by Drew at all, uh, Andrew, but uh, we have a That's hashtag, fine. hey, Drew comment here from Raymond Gardner joining us. And, uh, and uh, how does the west coast of Florida look? And uh, now that we have two blobs that we're looking at, you know, blobs, not necessarily a meteorological term here, but we can, we can roll <laughs> with it, right, Andrew? Yeah, absolutely. Those you know, two areas of development. Now, west coast of Florida, it, and, you know, if you take a look at that, the areas to watch there on your screen. Now, west coast is, you know, you're a little bit more protected. You need almost something to swing around the islands. Uh, Cuba and uh, Hispaniola and Jamaica to get into that side. Now, it's not out of the question uh, that maybe you get something over there or something that hits, let's say, the Atlantic side of Florida, maybe it up towards the Treasure Coast or something like that, and then crosses the state. So obviously, this is something we need to watch. And we're not on, it's not unheard of to have something in the Florida area uh, sometime by the late, late August, early September. Let's get to this one here uh, from Ronica Hampton. Hashtag, hey, Rebecca. So does this mean we'll start getting tropical storm or hurricane weather soon? And uh, remains to be seen, Rebecca. Not necessarily. What it does mean is that it's time to pay attention. Um, we, unfortunately, this time of the year have to start at least every other day checking in, making sure, checking in with your local meteorologist, making sure there's nothing out there, especially when it comes to long-term plans, because we have the areas to watch. There's no tracks. There's no nothing named or numbered out there right now, but it's just the time that we, as Floridians and as people that live in areas potentially affected by a hurricane, it's time to start watching for that. It feels tro like tro tro tropical downpour out there right now because we've had such rainy conditions. Conditions. We, we, we're in a westerly flow right now, so we get these big areas of rain just pushing on shore, and they sit there and move very slowly. So it feels a little bit like a tropical storm at some point with a little less wind, but we don't have anything out there right now. Usually the questions get asked here for the meteorologist. I just field these questions from Facebook Live, from the Facebook Live comment sections across the southeastern United States here on Track of the Tropics. But every now and again, a, a question is thrown my way. Uh, Brian Walker here asking, hashtag KJB, when will you get to ride in a hurricane hunter, and I can I can I can answer this question. I I, th I did it once. I went with the hurricane hunters into Hurricane Irma a couple years back. 
uh, right as it hit Category 5 strength as it made that turn uh, past Cuba towards the state of Florida. And I will tell you that it, uh, it was quite the flight. My fiancé at the time, my wife now, was not thrilled <laughs> that I went on that flight. We got struck by lightning mid-flight, too. A bit of a bumpy ride. I don't know if I would do it again, but one of the most eerie and humbling experiences of, of my life, really, because when you're in a Category 5 storm and then you emerge into, out, out of that eye wall and you're that, that Coliseum effect that we talk about here on Tracking the Tropics, it's, um, it's majestic, it's scary, yes. uh, but it's also extremely humbling, and it makes you feel this small. The true story makes you feel really, really small. Speaking of small, the Florida Keys, a small target here in South Florida, but Megan Taylor from Wavy's Facebook page asking here uh, in the Facebook Live comment section, asking hashtag hey, Rebecca visiting the Keys at the end of August. Is it too early to start stressing. And, and Rebecca, I was just there. No, you and guys in the Keys. Just came back, my, my wife and I and my, and my family, one of the most beautiful places in the world. If you haven't been to the Florida Keys, go check it out. Key West, of course, beautiful. Uh, but uh, talking about the, the Keys in a vulnerable position, being there at the very bottom of the sunshine state that we live in. Unfortunately, the, the keys can break your heart weather-wise, especially when you plan this far out to go. So first of all, Megan, I'm jealous, and I hope you have a great time. August is typically one of the quieter times in the keys. You get those days where you're, you'll get at least two or three days a week with less wind and just glassy water and beautiful conditions. Um, it's too early to start worrying. I wouldn't be that worried if I were you. Um, when you're a week, week and a half out, we'll have a better idea of exactly what it's going to be. But in terms of the Keys, it's much better in August than it is in September and way better than it is in October, November. It gets a little windy down there, storm or not, that time of the year. Fingers crossed for our, one of our, the most beautiful places in the world, the Florida Keys. Let's get to a question here for Andrew Shipley joining us here, everybody, from CBS4 in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas. Darshall Alexander from Wavy's Facebook page. A lot of great questions and comments. Big shout out to our Facebook Live commenters joining us from Wavy's Facebook, Facebook page. Hashtag hey, Andrew. I'm curious how Louisiana slash New Orleans and Virginia Beach, where I live, uh, will fare. And, and these are some, uh, especially Louisiana, New Orleans, these are areas okay. that we talk about quite a bit here, Andrew, on Tracking the Tropics. No, absolutely. And, you know, it's something that, you know, we're watching closely too, because a storm that would potentially go that way would put us in some kind of uh, subsistence, also some minor surge, maybe even down my way in the Rio Grande Valley, depending on where it forms up. But you know, it's, I think it's going to be a, a busier year uh, still. They've, you, as you guys have known, of people that live in New Orleans, they've been pounded by rainstorm after rainstorm. It's been a wet year uh, there. So um, it wouldn't surprise me if something happens that way. Now, I'm not saying 100% it's going to happen, but it's it's a hot spot, absolutely. Um, and and on Virginia Beach area, it's it just, it's too early to know, but this kind of weather pattern that we're getting into in August where a storm could swing up and could either become a fish storm or skirt uh, the Carolinas or even further north up into, let's say, Maryland and, and up toward Delmarva and further off to the north there. It's something to watch. Now, is it going to happen? Your guess is as good as mine, but obviously you want to stay watching track in the tropics and other forms of your local news and weather and we'll keep you updated and get you prepared uh, as if, but always prepare for every season as if you were going to get hit. And the last question we're going to take on this edition of Tracking the Tropics here, folks, comes from Jasmine Truck Kid Miller from WJTV's Facebook page. Shout out to all of our viewers joining us from Mississippi. Hashtag Hey Rebecca. Hello from the cone of uncertainty. It's been unusually quiet. Is that a sign that it's going to be highly active and you know this is a good conversation here for all of us to have here at the uh towards the end of our, our episode here as we begin to wrap up this august edition of tracking the tropics here folks but uh we we are ahead of schedule as far as the alphabet is concerned right rebecca but at the same time it, it's been a little bit quiet the last couple of weeks we have that odd juxtaposition there where it, it's been quiet the last couple of weeks but we're still i mean we're still on pace here for a pretty active season are we not we are on pace for an above average season. I think it's important, especially since the satellite technology we have now has been so upgraded that we are able to see that storms out in the far Atlantic that don't affect anyone and don't even last that long get a number or a name. And so we're, I think we have to adjust our expectations a little bit moving forward because we did run through so many names, but very few actually affected land early on. And then we got a lull. So it feels extra quiet since we only basically dealt with 
Elsa. And so we, once we do move into the season, we may be further down the list on names, but it's not really cranking up until late August into early September. That's when we'll start to, it will start to feel more busy because that's the point that we'll have more tracks out there. We'll have more systems out there, but I think not correlating the number of storms or the number of storms we've seen with how busy the season is. Once you disassociate that, it, it, it lets you think about the season a little bit more differently. And that's what I'm trying this season anyway. We'll see how it goes. No, and I agree with that too. You literally have to work your way through the name list of all these little storms. And some of those storms that we even had on list were subtropical storms. So they were even before hurricane season and they still get a name. So, and because of that, you're still, you're working your way through the list. And Elsa was the earliest e-name storm by I think a day or two here. Um, but you, you now you're far enough down the list that's five named storms. You're once you get to this next name, it doesn't mean it's going to be the earliest of that letter, but we're still well on our way. And let's just say it's 21 is the high end, you know, five, you know, we'll call it 20 just for easy math. You're already a quarter of the way through the names. And speaking of names here, folks, we, uh, I think ha next up on the list, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it's Fred. Fred, so hopefully yes, uh, Fred. I can already see, just like Elsa, I can already see all the Fred Flintstone memes that we're going to have all over <laughs> social media and all the other Freds out there. Fred, one of the more common names. And, of course, when you have a common name and it's associated with a hurricane, you get just all the memes, all the jokes, like we saw with Elsa. There were plenty of Elsa memes and gifts out there. Uh, great to have Let's know. <laughs> right. Andrew Shipley joining us here, everybody, from CBS4 uh, in Brownsville, Texas. Before we let you go, Andrew, uh, what are you looking uh, – what, what are you monitoring as far as the upcoming weeks and the upcoming months of, of hurricane season here? Uh, for hurricane season, uh, we're mainly focused on any effects that um, any storm surge can any have in our area. I, it just doesn't look like it – feel like a hot – zone for us here in, in, in Texas, in South Texas, at least. I think north of us will probably be a little bit higher percentage because our uh, we got hit by Hannah last year. It doesn't mean anything, but our return average is about every 11 years. Uh, so it's something we'll watch, but obviously that track more just north of the Yucatan, maybe up towards the Houston area, maybe further up towards Louisiana. It's something we'll keep an eye on for uh, that stuff. Plus, I'm also uh, working on a little story myself on uh, the effects of storm surge down on the uh, SpaceX facility down here in uh, Boca Chica Beach. Andrew Shipley joining us from CBS4, everybody. Give him a follow on, on social media. And for folks that have been with us here before on Tracking the Tropics, you likely know that we are, are streaming all every Wednesday during hurricane season on whatever app, website, or social media platform that you're watching right now. Wednesdays, 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central. We answer your questions here on every episode of Tracking the Tropics, whether it's quiet or whether it's hectic. And also, we are live, of course, when storms form. So it doesn't matter which day of the week it is. If we're tracking something that, of course, has potential impacts here in the United States or in the Caribbean, we're going to keep you posted and have regular updates uh, as far as live streams go here from our hurricane headquarters in Tampa, Florida, here on Tracking the Tropics. One more time, big thank you to Andrew Shipley joining us from Texas. And, of course, Tracking the Tropics meteorologist Rebecca Barry, who you see here, everybody, on WFLA News Channel 8. I'm J.B. Buna. We'll see you next time here, folks, on Tracking the Tropics when, again, a storm forms or for our Wednesday episodes, 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central. Thank you for watching Tracking the Tropics.